taken Uganda so long to embrace Kiswahili? Let's find out. There is an old East African joke that Kiswahili was born in Zanzibar, grew up in mainland Tanzania, fell sick in Kenya, died in Uganda, and was buried in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The origin of the joke is unknown, but whoever made it chose to kill Kiswahili, the Swahili language. Uganda is the only East African community country where Swahili is not the primary language. That's changing, thanks to a national push to embrace it. Uganda has finally decided to make the most spoken language in Africa mandatory in the school curriculum, after years of trying. In the past, the introduction of the language into classrooms was hampered by a lack of government commitment, a shortage of teachers and materials, and public opposition. However, the government is becoming more committed, and the opposition is dissipating. Uganda is a member of the East African Community, which was founded in 1999 and is headquartered in Tanzania. The East African Legislative Assembly, the organization's legislative arm, passed a resolution in 2016 urging the organization to amend its treaty to include Kiswahili as one of the community's official languages. Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, South Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo are all members. In 2017, the organization's Council of Ministers directed all member countries to develop a national language policies that would establish Kiswahili as one of the East African community's official languages. Kiswahili is spoken by over 200 million people around the world. It is already a national and official language in Kenya and Tanzania both founding members of the regional organization, as well as one of four national languages in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The language is required in Kenya for the first 12 years of formal schooling. In Tanzania, it is the primary school language. In Uganda, Swahili is associated with a brutal military regime. Many Ugandans, particularly those born in the 1960s and 1970s, were initially hostile to Kiswahili because they associated it with death and destruction. Some saw it as a thief's language. The negative feelings stemmed from Uganda's long history of coups and civil wars, which resulted in egregious human rights violations. According to Amnesty International, some of the worst atrocities occurred between 1971 and 1979, during the regime of General Idi Amin, whose dictatorship may have killed up to 300,000 Ugandans. Soldiers communicated in Kiswahili while terrorizing civilians. Idi Amin himself was a speaker and supporter of the language, claiming that he wanted to teach it to African Americans to brainwash them away from British colonials. Kiswahili was used by the regime's police as a status symbol, making them feel more powerful. That is what tainted Ugandans' understanding of the language. The Kingdom of Buganda, a monarchy within Uganda that is home to Luganda, the country's most widely spoken native language, has long been opposed to Kiswahili's mainstreaming. The kingdom believes that Uganda does not require Kiswahili because the majority of the population speaks Luganda. Despite recent school adoption of Kiswahili, the kingdom maintains that Luganda is just as important and should be made an official language as well. President Yoweri Museveni, for his part, is attempting to persuade Ugandans that Kiswahili is an important language. Museveni urged Africans to use Kiswahili as a means of unifying the continent during a speech on African Integration Day on June 4, 2021. It is a neutral language that belongs to nobody, he said. Kiswahili is widely recognized as a language of unity outside of Uganda. World Kiswahili Language Day was declared by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, in November. This UNESCO recognition would aid efforts in Uganda to promote Kiswahili. Kiswahili is gaining popularity in universities and colleges. Students are realizing that diversifying their skills, such as learning new languages, increases their chances of finding work. Some believe that the formation of the East African community is rapidly erasing national borders, and that Kiswahili is the unifying medium of communication. It can be difficult to introduce a new language into the educational system or to impose it on an already functioning civilization. Will Kiswahili be accepted in Uganda?
Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure you like the page and turn on the notification bell for more stories.